praise. I heard someone out there ready to praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Those of you at home, come on and join us. How many of you came Hallelujah. this morning to give God some praise? Come on, tell your neighbor, wake up. We came to give him some praise this morning. Yeah, yeah. Come on, wake up and give us some praise this morning. And I know some of you may have had a hard week, but you know what? There's a song that's out that talks about that praise is what my enemy is drowned in. How many of you want to drown some enemies this morning? Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's fill the atmosphere with some praise hey! this morning. Can you just open up your mouth and Hallelujah. begin to praise him? Hallelujah. Yeah! You at home, can you open up Hallelujah! your mouth and begin to praise him? If you're in your car, open up your mouth and begin to praise Thank him. You, Lord. Come on and shake the foundation yes, with sir. praise this morning. Come on and give him some praise. Yeah! He's worthy. He's Hallelujah. worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go. Thank hey. you, Jesus. Come on, put your hands on it this morning. Hallelujah. Hey. Hey. Come on, wake up, 9 o'clock. Come on. Hey. Come on, say glory. Glory. Sing hallelujah. Say this is what. This is what we've come to do. Oh, tell tell our strongholds Come on, put your hands on it. Like find the devil. Find the devil in Jesus' name.
Come on, shake them. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to have this, this time, Lord. We can praise and worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We love you so much, God. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Just love and beauty in this world. But nothing in this world could satisfy, Lord. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence is heavy. anxiety for months and I think the Lord is telling me I've been wanting you to bow I've just been wanting you to make that public declaration that I'm 
bigger than all of this. So if you can, I don't know if you can, if you're able, but I'm just going to kneel before him right now and give it to him. All the anxiety, all the depression, whatever you're facing, I'm shaking right now because I'm telling you, I've been dealing with this for months. I can't get up here and sing and lead a song because the enemy has been attacking me every time I open my mouth. And I've been dealing with this in front of you all for months. But God, he just wants us to give it all to him. It's not about what we look like. It's not about what we sound like. It's not even about what we feel like because I don't want to be up here right now. If I'm honest with you, I'm scared to death right now. But God wants change right now. God wants us to just rest in his presence. Jesus, your presence is heaven to me. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, your presence is heaven. Let's sing it together. Your presence is heaven to me. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. Yes, you are, Jesus. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Oh, you're everything we need. You're the cup. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence is heaven. Oh, your presence is heaven. Is heaven. that you hold our every moment, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you walk beside us, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your presence this morning, Jesus. Bye. 
is all that you need this morning. Jesus, you're all that we need. He's more than enough. This morning, do you believe that he's your healer today? Do you believe that God is able to do the impossible? Those things that maybe you heard a report this past week, and you need God to do something in your life. We want to ask our prayer partners to come at this time, pastors, staff members that are here. We want to give you an opportunity to have someone agree with you in prayer and ask God to intervene on your behalf today. So this morning, we want to give you an opportunity to come and have one of our prayer partners pray with you and believe God with you today. If you've got a need this morning, we want to encourage you to come at this time.
So most gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you today, believing, trusting in you, asking in Jesus' name that you would meet the needs of your sons and daughters today, those who have come before you today, you see what they've been able to bring. The hearts are broken in pieces today, God. Father, there's just too much of anxiety That is trying to paralyze us. Keeping us from being free today. But we cry out to you almighty God. And ask in Jesus name. That you would bring the freedom that we need today. Father we pray today. That you would cause our minds and our hearts to align father. With who you are today. That you're a portion today. That you're our help today. That you're our strength today. That you're the way maker God. The God who causes us to move closer to you. Father, I pray today in Jesus' name. That you would bind up every wounded heart today. Every infirmity, Father. Every disease today. Father, we pray that in Jesus' name, that the stripes that were laid upon your back were for our healing today. Father, we pray for those who are in financial distress today. You be Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides today. Make a way where there seems to be no way. Father, meet the needs of your sons and daughters today. Father, we even lift up our children to you today who've made their way back for another school year, God. We pray today in Jesus' name for a hedge of protection around them. Father, we pray that this would be an incredible academic year. Father, we pray for growth today. We pray for those who are in education today, God. For teachers, for counselors, God. For administrators, God. Father, we pray for the bus drivers and the cafeteria workers and the janitors, God. Father, we pray for the SROs today. Father, we pray that you would equip each building with the right people today, God. Father, we pray for your people today who have called upon you and ask, will you take all the broken pieces of our lives today? This is all we have to bring to you today, God. We pray for your healing power to be manifested in your house. For this, we declare, is a house of miracles. And we believe in Jesus' name 
that it shall be done according to your word. In Jesus' name, let the church shout amen today. Come on and give him praise today. Lift your voice. Come on, give the Lord a praise offering this morning. Come on and give him a shout of praise. You've been able to go to the King of Kings this morning. And I believe he's imparted life into you today. I believe he's brought a freedom that you've never known this morning. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised today. I don't know what you've come with today, but I believe that God is doing something in our lives today. I believe we've been on a journey, church, and he's been desiring for us to be filled with more of his glory, more of his power, more of his love, more of him. I don't know who in this house could be any more thirsty this morning. He said, whenever you thirst, He's walking with you this morning. He'll take you through this morning. You're not left alone this morning. God's walking right with you today. He will see you through. He will see you through. Truly is amazing how the Spirit of the Lord moves and works. The very thing that was just declared, that was what the Holy Spirit had just dropped in my heart. And I was getting ready to declare that to you today. God knows when you're thirsty that he's the well that will never run dry. The well that will never run dry this morning. I don't know about you, but he's worthy to be praised. Can we give him another shout of praise today? Your freedom request, I believe God is granting those. Your freedom prayer, God is answering those. Your petitions today, God is moving on your behalf today. Come on and give him a shout of praise today. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, almighty God. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. God is too good to us. He's so good. So good. This morning, we just want to encourage you as you are mindful of the presence of the Lord today. 
God has a word for us to receive. God's already moving in our midst today. Just want to encourage you, if this might be your first time ever attending Sheffield Family Life Center, we just would like to ask you if you'll be so kind as to make it to our Connection Center in the West Lobby this morning after service. We'd like to greet you. We've got a gift for you. We'd like to answer any questions you might have about Sheffield Family Life Center. But this morning, I want to encourage you to turn around, greet someone before you're seated this morning. Tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This morning, we believe that God is in our midst and we want to reverence his presence today. Just want to encourage you, if you'd like to continue in your time of worship and giving, you can go to 816-266-4848 and go to sflc.net. Hit on the giving prompt, or hopefully you've pick, been able to pick up an envelope as you made your way into the sanctuary today and after the service. If you'll be so kind as to place them in the receptacles in the middle of the sanctuary back by the sound booth this morning. If you'll be so kind, turn your attention to our screens today. We've got some announcements for you. Good morning, Sheffield family. It's another beautiful Sunday, and we're so excited that you chose to join us in person and online. As always, there's a lot going on that I want to let you know about, so here's your announcements. We will not be having Operation Loves Outreach for the month of September due to the holiday weekend. If you would like to see how you can receive food in the future or get involved in this ministry, please contact Denise Webb at the church office. Sisterhood is beginning a new study entitled From Beginning to Forever by Elizabeth Woodson. It will begin September 6th at 7 p.m. in the Dock Hall. If you would like to purchase a copy of the study guide, they will be made available soon through our Connection Center for $10. If Wednesdays don't work for you, on September 12th, we will begin a Tuesday night option at 7 p.m. via Zoom. This is going to be through our Refuge Women's Prayer and Bible Study Group. If you would like more info about this study, please reach out to our church office. Our next baby dedication will be September 10th during our 11 a.m. service. If you'd like to register for this baby dedication, you can go online to sflc.net slash baby dedications. If you'd like more information about this process or have some questions, you can contact Ashley Pritchard at the church office. We are hosting the WAGA, which is Woman After God's Own Heart Conference again. It's going to be October 27th through October 28th. You can purchase tickets in our Connection Center for $65. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact Ernestine White at our church office. Our next baptisms will be September 20th at 7 p.m. in our chapel. If you'd like to register to be baptized, please go online to sflc.net slash baptisms. There will be a mandatory class on September 13th in our doc hall at 7 p.m. If you have questions or would like more information, please contact Ashley Pritchard at the church office. Pastor Willie would like to remind you that if you are grieving the loss of a loved one, to please reach out to our church. You can contact Denise Webb. We want to share an announcement of the passing, so therefore us as a church body can come together and uplift you and pray for you during your time of loss.
That's all the announcements I have for you today. Now it's time for giving. We have a couple different options on how you can give. You can text 816-266-4848, enter that exact giving amount, and then follow the prompts. You can visit us online at sflc.net, click on that giving tab, then fill out your information there. If you'd like to mail or walk in your tithe, it'd be here to the main campus at 5700 Winter Road, Kansas City, Missouri, 64127. And if you're in the house today, thank you so much for being here. We truly appreciate you. If you would like, you can pick up a tithe envelope, fill out all your information, seal it up, and drop it in the receptacles right after service. Have an awesome day, Sheffield. Hey, Amen. God is doing some incredible things here at Sheffield. Amen. We want to encourage you to be a part of opportunities provided for you. Just want to make you aware that Wednesday night is family night here for you and your entire family. We've got uh, Royal Rangers, Missionettes. We've, our children's ministry is open, infant nurseries, the whole bit. We have young adults, youth. Uh, we've got our married couples. And then also just want to remind you for the adult Bible study, Dr. Westlake uh, took a course on how, in the 50s of creative Bible teaching. Um, he has been taught, he's taught this to pastors in Asia and Africa and all over Europe. He's using this book, he's using the book of Jonah on Wednesday nights to teach it and also on the way how to study. And uh, he has given homework assignments. How many of you love homework? Come on, raise your hands. It's good for you. Homework is always good for you. It keeps the mind moving, right? It keeps you growing. So, there's homework assignments, and he has pass outs back here at the uh, sound booth, and he would encourage you to pick those up today before you leave, and so that when you come back on Wednesday night, you've already done some homework, studying, and um, I tell you what, it's going to be an opportunity for you to grow and learn how to study the Bible. You can do this and study at home and in these, uh, with these handouts, and I want to encourage you. Be in the house of the Lord on Wednesday nights for the adult Bible study. We don't realize that Dr. Westlake celebrating this is a, uh, one of those times in our lives where Dr. Westlake is celebrating 50 years of ministry. It's a jubilee year. Think about it. I've been thinking about him celebrating his jubilee year of ministry and the things that the Lord has used him to impart into our lives, that we receive the benefit and we have access to the knowledge that God has placed in him. And so we, we need to take advantage of the opportunity because there's always a time when we have greatness come before us and we don't realize it until they're gone. I want to encourage you to take the opportunity to send it in the ministry and be encouraged and grow. Amen. I want to encourage you as we continue in our time of worship and giving today that, um, that you do it with a cheerful heart. God has a blessing in store for you. He desires that we bring in all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. You're saying, Pastor, what is the meat? It's the word of the Lord. That's the, the table that he has spread for us today. But the ministry has to continue on. And there's so many missionaries around the world that depend upon the faithfulness of God's people in giving to this house. I'm telling you, over the course of years, we have touched thousands and thousands upon thousands of lives because of your faithfulness in giving to God. You're going to be able to stand before the Lord one day and hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. You're saying, what have I been faithful with? I believe you've been faithful with your time, your treasures, and your talents. And that's what God would ask of us today. If you would tithe of your time, your treasures, and your talents, see what God won't do on your behalf today. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful that, you, that we have the opportunity to give to you what is rightfully yours in the way of our first fruits, our tithes, our offerings today. We pray that we would give it with a cheerful heart today. We pray that you would use it for the building of your kingdom. And I, rep and I pray today that you would bless both gift and giver in Jesus' mighty name. And let the church shout amen this morning. May the Lord bless you as you give to him. Let's welcome our pastor today. God is... Uh
God's amazing and his, uh, his presence is unmatched. And we have experienced that already today. And, uh, I, and I, feel, I feel like um, the piece that um, Deonza Brown presented, I think we need to maybe take one more step with that. Because there's uh, that anxiety piece. Uh, anxiety is a, is a huge wave in our life inside of us. And a lot of the times... It takes years to recognize it as for what it is. And I believe it becomes something that the enemy can use against us in an incredibly powerful way. And, and we don't really know how to deal with it most of the times. You can, you can talk to people. You can get counseling or therapy, and, and I'm for all of that. Uh, but God is really the, uh, God is really the, the, the master of of deconstructing that in your life and allowing you to walk in the calling and anointing and authority that you have in him in spite of everything that's coming against you. So I just, I just want to pray again about that. And for those of you who here watching online, you're dealing with that. And I really feel like uh, that hit me especially hard and and I was I was so moved by by her leading that way, and I want to pray that over you. I want to pray victory in that specific area. Very rarely do we just say let's pray against anxiety, because there's that there's that thing that hangs out here that says if you're really spiritual, then you don't have to deal with those things. That's not true. That's not true because. You're living in a real world, you're living real life in a real world, and, and you've got a real enemy coming against you, plus all the things you deal with in life. And so it becomes huge, and just because you're dealing with it and it seems to be getting the best of you does not mean you're not spiritual. Not at all. I, I recently heard some a prolific speaker say, you know, refer to the fact that that if you're experiencing burnout and anxiety and all of that, then you're not living properly for the Lord. And I just thought, you've obviously missed something. Because uh, it, it's a battle. It's a battle, and it's real. So I'm going to pray with you, and, if, and if, if that's something you deal with or dealing with or have dealt with, then just however you can as we're praying, just visualize yourself giving that to God, just giving that to Him. I think bowing before Him is a, is a key piece, bowing before Him and giving Him that that you have and that oppresses you, and we're going to believe that He'll take that. And as we cast our cares on Him, He will take that, and your load will be lighter. Heavenly Father, right now, we bring our burdens to You. They're, they're incredibly heavy sometimes, and we don't like to draw attention to ourselves and act like we've got it worse than everyone else, but everyone in the sound of my voice deals with things or has dealt with things that become too heavy to bear. And I pray especially today, God, we call out that, that battle against anxiety, that battle against anxiety that brings voices and threats and demons and oppression with it that battle against anxiety, God, I pray that you would give victory, especially for those who have been battling this and think maybe there's no victory for them. There is victory, God, so we cast our cares on you because you're able and you care for us. So we give you these because you are larger, stronger, and, and all-knowing. So we know that you've got this. And God, I pray that, that as we're going through it, you would give us the strength to battle through it. Not just deliver us, but give us the strength to get through it. So God, give people what they need. Give them the confidence and let them know whatever stands in front of them, whatever's behind them, whatever's looming overhead, that you love them and you have them and you understand their journey. So we commit this to you and we commit ourselves to you in this process. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. There is victory. There is victory. Uh, we ended last week, we, last Sunday, this is kind of a, uh, 
uh, a partnering message with that. It was, it's not necessarily the conclusion, but it could be. And I just, I just want to go back into that, that statement that we were making. If you were with us last week, you heard this. If not, it will be uh, new for you today. But we just said together several times, God is able. And, and that, that really stuck with me this week. I had people say that to me. I had people text that to me. Uh, God is able. God is able, and we need to realize that above everything else. God is able. God is able. And, and we can't say that enough. I'm not a huge recite and repeat and turn to your neighbor guy, but sometimes we need to just say things. Sometimes we need to speak them, and we need to hear ourselves say them. So I tell you today, and I ask you today, say it again for yourself, quiet or loud or inside or, ex- or externally, God is able. God is able. God is able. God is, you can't say that enough. You can't hold it tight enough to that. God is able. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're looking at, whatever is coming against you, God is able. God is able. And we have that lying voice of the enemy that says he's not able for you. He's able for them, but not for you. Does anybody else hear that? The enemy throws that at me a lot. Okay, four of us. Um, The enemy throws that at me a lot. Most of you obviously don't deal with that, but if you did, if you could possibly put yourself in my place or the other three people's place, where the enemy says, no, he he can help them, but he can't help you. Because you hear these amazing testimonies and see these things and, you know, and you just think, wow, wow. And the enemy says, well... He can do that for them, but not for you. And it usually, there's usually a semicolon, and it's because you're not good enough, or you don't deserve it, or you failed too much, or you have too much criticism in your heart. There's too much confusion. You know, you're skeptical about some of the things spiritually, so God is not going to help you. That is a lie. God is able. God is able. When we cast our cares on Him, He is able to take those and deliver us from those. It doesn't say, it doesn't tell us, the Word of God doesn't say, now when you're perfect and everything is right, you can hand Him your cares and He will take them from you. No, cast your cares, all of you that are burdened and weighed down, cast your cares on Him. God shows up, but not exactly the way we want Him to. I've had this in my head every day for two or three weeks. God shows up, but not exactly the way we want him to. I'm going to give you an update just because uh, you you wonder. uh, Our son Austin, he was supposed to have surgery last Monday. They changed it till this next Tuesday, so two days from now. Uh, He's having a cancer surgery two days from now. Uh, They're removing uh, the the growth, and they're also removing a couple of the lymph nodes. So... um, this is, a, this is a, real, a real battle. Keep him in prayer, Austin, and his family, our family. Keep us in prayer because uh, we know God is able. God is able. God is able. So this Tuesday morning, it'll happen this Tuesday morning, and if you're a person who uh, prays or believes in that uh, in here or on the online, uh, pray with us and believe that God will restore him and uh, he would walk out of this thing completely completely whole. Because we know God is able. God is able. God is able. You know, we get surprises. We all get surprises. Uh, Good things happen to, uh, bad things happen to good people. It rains on the just and the unjust. Uh, Nobody gets to the finish line without being covered in dirt. It just, you just don't get to the finish line clean in, in life. And so we cast our cares on God and we know that he's able. Last week, I was going to go 3-2-1. I went 3-2, and the 3 was this. Three Hebrew boys, Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael, who we know as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But I, I decided, preparing that sermon last week, that I'm not going to officially call them that anymore because that's, those are their Babylonian names. I will, I will refer to them so people will know who I'm, who I'm talking about. Those are their Babylonian names that were given to them to remove not only their heritage but their destiny and change that. So to me, I'm going back to uh, calling them Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael when I refer to the three Hebrew boys who ended up getting thrown in the furnace that was fiery and uh, was, was, a, was a death pit. God showed up for them, but they had to go through it. 
You know, they had to go through it. They were bound. They were thrown in. People watched. They landed on the ground, uh, and they came out not even smelling like smoke because God showed up. But they, unfortunately, had to go through it for God to show up. Then I talk about two sisters, Mary and Martha, their brother Lazarus. Who, these were all good friends of Jesus. He died. Jesus waited and, and did not show up rather than, than come right to their house when he heard the news that Lazarus was sick, uh, even unto death. He waited. He showed up four days late. Lazarus had been dead for four days. They were not happy. They were disappointed. Once again, God showed up, but not exactly the way they wanted him to. They had to wait and witness what God actually wanted to do. At points in life, at points in life, we know God will show up and we believe he will, but we don't really like the way he does it because sometimes he does it after the fact. And you think, God, why didn't you show up? And, and the truth is, there was, another, there was another destination that God was trying to take you to, take me to, take us to, and so we had to walk through his maze to get there. And we don't see it until we get there and we realize at some point. Some of you are going through things today and you, you're thinking, I, don't, I still don't understand the point of this. I don't understand. Well, I believe that someday, even here on earth, you know, I'm not talking about when we get to glory, but even here on earth, I believe there there's, comes a day usually when we say, I see God's hand in it. I see it. I see it. It makes a little bit of sense now. Sometimes we have to wait, and we have to witness what God actually wants to do. Well, today I want to I give this to you, and it's one community. Three Hebrew boys, two sisters, one community or one nation. Deuteronomy chapter 29, Moses is giving his final speech to the children of Israel, the nation of Israel that has been journeying to go across the river into the promised land that's been given them. And Moses uh, summoned all of the Israelites together, and he told them many things and, and uh, talked about commitment and, and all kinds of things. But he said, for 40 years, for 40 years, I led you through the wilderness. For 40 years, they had to live it out, 40 plus years. We know God is able but we end up so often having to live it out, and we really didn't want to live it out. And Moses is telling them, for 40 years, we traveled through the wilderness. We've been living this out. Living it out is the narrow road. And the narrower the road, the fewer people will travel it. You know, when there's blessing and there's prosperity and there's this and there's that and it's good and there's attention and there's platform and there's opportunity, the road is wide. As we have to journey, and we have to go through things, and we have to battle things, and we have to keep our faith in spite of what we're not sure of, the road begins to narrow. You know, I look back on my life spiritually, and there were times when, oh, there were so many people on the road I was traveling, and as I've gone through life, most of the people that I started out with on this road, they're not on the road anymore. Things changed. Their faith changed. The adversity threw them off. They got off on a detour and never got back on. I have a lot of friends that did that. They got off the freeway, went this way, and never got back on. The road is narrow. The road of righteousness is narrow. The road of spiritual destiny is narrow. And few travel it. Because when we do travel it, we're going to have to go through things. That's witness of it. The more narrow the road, the fewer the people will travel. And we say, God, deliver us. God, deliver us. God, lead us out of this. And instead, we kind of get that directional feeling of, I'm going to have to live it out. I'm going to have to live it out. When someone in your family gets sick, like we've had someone in our family get sick, that it, it doesn't seem to fit. And you're just like, God, come on. I know you can heal. I know you can heal miraculously. Do that. Please do that. We have faith. We believe. Other people pray. Other people believe. And rather than seeing the miracle, we have to live it out. And the miracle actually becomes living it out. Because see, that the miracle is not just the healing. The miracle is the journey as well. 
as you look back at your journey, and it's not just the transitions in your life and the moments in your life. The miracle is that you were on the road, and you're still on the road, and God has kept you. That's a, that might be a greater miracle. When we have to actually live it out, that's a miracle of the hand of God. He provides. And here's a piece that I would guess, and I won't ask you because you've already shown me today that you really don't want to raise your hand. But here's, here's, a, here's a piece that I'm guessing. Okay, this is an easy one. How many of you knew in some form or fashion that the children of Israel wandered around the desert, the wilderness, for 40 years or so? You knew that. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for participating. Now, I won't ask for a show of hands on this, but I would guess a large percentage of those of you who raised your hand there may not realize this. Moses said, I have led you through the wilderness. I have led you through the wilderness for 40 years, yet your clothes and your sandals did not wear out. You did not have food and drink like you were used to, but the Lord provided. Forty years and your clothes and your shoes didn't wear out. We don't hear that preached too often. We don't look at that too often. Okay, now here's another aspect of it. Over 40 years, your body changes a little bit. So not only did they wear out, somehow the shoes and the clothes still fit for 40 years. That, that might be a bigger miracle. No pun intended. Their clothes and their shoes didn't wear out for 40 years. So what's the point? Yeah, that's novel, but what's the point? The point is God takes us through and he shows up, but not exactly the way we want him to. We ask for deliverance. We ask for him to set us free to show up. And instead of showing up and pulling us out of it, he provides for us in it. He may not pull you out of the situation, but he will provide for you in the situation. Do we have any witnesses of that? I prayed that God would deliver me. He didn't, but he got me through. I prayed that God would take this from me. He didn't, but he helped me to get through, and I'm better today, and I'm stronger today, and my faith is stronger because of it. So you may not get taken to the shoe store, but God will, pre God will protect the shoes that you've got so they don't wear out and you can keep walking in them. Waiting and witnessing, Mary and Martha, going through it, the three Hebrew boys. He'll show up. It might be in the fire. How many of you ever, you were in the fire before God showed up and you saw him? Yeah, it's, it happens. We end up in the furnace and we come out of it. He'll show up or after a loss. We didn't want it to go that way, but I went through it. And you're still there, God. You're still there. And my shoes are still, they're still okay. I can still walk in them. Because you didn't pull me out of it, but you provided within it. There's a story I love. I shared it once five to ten years ago. In 1912, in 1912, it was the, the fifth Olympiad. There had only been four prior, the fifth Olympiad in Stockholm, Sweden. There was a man by the name of Jim Thorpe. He was an American athlete. He was a Native American. And to this point, no Native American had ever won a medal in the Olympics. So Jim Thorpe was in Stockholm, Sweden, representing the United States. And he 
would later be known as the world's greatest athlete, but he participated in the pentathlon, which is five events in one day, and also the decathlon, which is 10 events in three days. They still have these. And so he had won the, the gold in the pentathlon. He, has not, he had not yet received his gold medal. because I believe they gave all the medals out at the end of the Olympics. So he had not yet received his medal, but he had won the gold medal in the pentathlon. He's now in the decathlon. There were, there were between one and three events left. It was the last day of the decathlon. And it's, it's hard to document, but there was either one event left, the 1,500 meter, or there were three events left, and it's more likely there were three. So he had three events left, and, and Jim Thorpe got up on, we're going to call it a Friday to finish it, and he got in his bag to get his stuff, and someone had stolen his shoes. And this, this is all true stuff. Someone had, had stolen his shoes. So he went, he went in his bag, and he was, he was prepared to, to get ready for the, the last events, and his shoes were gone. Now, there's no real explanation. We don't know if people said, hey, he's an American. We don't want him to win. He's a Native American. We don't want him to do this. We don't know what, what, if bias was involved. We don't, know, we don't know that, but we know his shoes ended up missing. And so what Jim Thorpe did, he began to ask the other athletes, do you have another pair of shoes? Do you have an extra pair of shoes? Do you have an extra pair of shoes? Do you have some shoes I, could, I can borrow to finish the, the decathlon in? Nobody had shoes for him. You know, oftentimes in life, the people you help, when you need help, they don't help you. It's, it's a true piece of life. Oftentimes, the people you help most don't show up when you're in need. So Jim, you know, I, and, he, and there, was, there was talk. So you can only imagine the other athletes were saying, hey, Thorpe can't compete. It's wide open now. It's wide open. He's out. He's done. You, can't, you cannot run in the race. You cannot compete in the events without shoes on, without the proper equipment. So he was, he was out. And I'm sure some of the competitors were loving it. And probably one of them, my guess is one of them, had something to do with his shoes being gone. And so Jim did the only thing left to do. And he started digging around in a trash can. And he found a shoe. It wasn't his size. But he put it on, he dug around, and he found another shoe in the trash can, and it wasn't his size either. So he had one shoe that was too small and one shoe that was too big. But he put these shoes on, and he decided he was going to compete in two shoes pulled out of a trash can that didn't fit. Does that sound like life? And so Jim Thorpe, in two shoes, pulled out of a trash can that didn't fit, won the events, and won the gold in the, decath in the decathlon. In trash can shoes that weren't his size. He decided at some point... I'm not going to let the things that deter me change my destination. I'm not going to let the things that get in my way change the outcome. I'm going to do whatever I have to do. And here's what I'm telling you today from that story. No one gets to finish the end of your story. The devil, the enemy of your soul, does not get to write the rest of your story. 
Sickness does not get to author the rest of your story. Hardship does not get to determine the rest of your story. Things you're going through do not get to determine the outcome of your life. Setbacks do not get to determine where you go. Where you're standing today does not get to determine where you finish. We have to decide that I am only going to let God write the end of my story. Some of you, as you're dealing with things, you're dealing with setbacks and sickness and frustration and anxiety. That does not get to author the rest of your story. Only God and his destiny for you can write the rest of your story. So some of you need to claim that personally and say, I receive that. I am not going to let things determine my outcome. I am not going to let setbacks determine my destination. I am going to finish the race that God has called me to, and he's going to give me the strength because greater is he that's in me than he that's around me stealing things. And one of the things I love most about God, we get in position, we have the shoes, but we lose them. Something takes them from us. You know what God is amazing about doing? Leading us back to the trash can. And we find another shoe. Say, God, I don't know how I ended up here. I said I was never going to be here again. And he takes us back to that trash can, and we find another shoe, and we find another shoe, and we find another shoe. And every time the enemy says, no, no, you can't compete, you are out out of the race because you're not equipped, God will take us back to that trash can, and he will allow us to find another shoe, another shoe so we can keep running the race. Why? Because God is able. Whatever you're dealing with in your life, God is able. Say it with me. God is able. And it's for you. It's for you. God is able. He's able. Only God can write the rest of your story. And the story doesn't always end well. But it's God who authored it, and he gives you the strength to get through it. Because if he can, if he can, if he can take you there, he can take you through it. He stays with you. Some of you need to, you need to hold that tight to your heart. And remember this, this Jim Thorpe story. It's one of my favorite stories in all of history. Because you can use things that are less than perfect. And every time I think about this story, I think, God, that's us. You find us and you use us and we're less than perfect. We're kind of trash can tennis shoes. Trash can track shoes. But somehow God pulls us out and he uses us. And he uses a guy like me, a person like you, maybe the wrong person from the wrong place. But God says, I'm going to pull you out of there and I'm going to use you. And he can do that for you today. Some of you in the sound of my voice need to commit or recommit your life to Christ. Some of you need to commit your ways to him. You have the foundational belief. You have the foundational relationship. That's there, but you need to commit your ways to him. God, I commit my ways to you. I commit myself to you. Don't just, don't just love me, but lead me. See, there's a difference between believing and following. And some of you are in that intermediary place. You have your belief, but you're not following very well. Every time you lose the shoes, okay, I'm out. No. God's got you and he's able. So we're going to pray a prayer. If you need to pray any part of this with me in the room or online, pray this with me. It's going to be a prayer of dedication, of rededication, and committing our ways to him. So you may not need to pray the whole thing, but there may be a sentence or two that applies to you. So jump in there. Heavenly Father. 
I need you in my life. I commit myself to you. I choose to be a follower of Jesus Christ. I ask you to change my heart, my mind, my direction. Not only my mind and my direction, but I commit all of my ways to you. And I ask you to lead me today. I believe, but I'm asking you to lead me. Help me to be a better follower of you in my life. And I proclaim that you're able. And I stand on that. I follow you today. I pursue you passionately. Give me the strength I need. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stand with me if you would all over the house. I want to remind you again as you're getting ready to walk out the door, God is able. God is able. God is able. We're all the different mile markers on the road. God is able. He's able. He loves you. He cares about you. And he leads you. And he's able. So walk out these doors and know that you are God's property. You're his. And he's yours. Allow him to tell his story through you. You may or may not have to speak. You can live that life, and he can tell his story through you as you live it out. So live that out. And say, well, I, I need God to deliver me. Pray that, but also know that he may give you the strength to go through it instead. And he'll, he'll let you walk in shoes, and they won't wear out. Your sandals won't wear out. Your clothes won't wear out spiritually. And you say, I can't believe I got to where I am. Well, God kept you. God kept you. He's able to keep you. So commit your ways to him. So walk out these doors. Love him. Love people. Honor him. And allow God to speak to you. God bless you. Have a great week. Be blessed.